The Empire stands as the largest and most powerful realm in the old world. It is a reflection of human resilience and ingenuity in a world of constant peril and wonder. Its vast lands and provinces are as diverse as they are rich in history and culture. This grand expanse is a mosaic of landscapes, each with its own unique challenges and secrets. What follows is a collection of works by yours truly, Dr. Stefan Hoffman from the University of Nome. Through my eyes, we will traverse the rugged coastlines of Nordland, wander through the eerie mists of Sylvania, stand at the bustling docks of Marienburg, and <laughs> so much more. Dive into the middle of the action in War Thunder, the ultimate vehicle warfare game. Now free on PC and consoles. Command a massive arsenal of over 2,500 tanks, aircraft, helicopters and naval vessels from 10 major nations. The game offers intricate vehicle detail, lifelike graphics and authentic sound effects, placing you in control of history's mightiest war machines. Ranging from biplanes and armoured cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. Experience the in-depth customization system that the game offers, including historical markings, camouflages and decorations for all types of vehicles, which you can control with your mouse, keyboard or a game controller. When a vehicle is destroyed, War Thunder reveals the exact impact point and affected components in the amazing X-Ray View. Join a global community of more than 70 million players for thrilling PvP battles and unrivaled depth of content. Download War Thunder today for free by using the link in the pinned comment or video description. New players and those who haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack including premium vehicles and an exclusive vehicle decorator available on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. More than two centuries have passed since the Empire was reunited as a single realm. However, evil still lurks in the depths of these lands. Mutant monsters prowl its dark forests, malevolent creatures plot beneath its cities, and the living dead rise from the graveyards. This journey is not just a geographical survey, no, but a dive into the heart of the Empire, revealing how its people have shaped and have been shaped by their land. From the hardy Kislevites in the north to the proud Reichlanders, each province tells a story of survival, valour and the indomitable spirit of humanity. And so, our journey begins. I have recently received an intriguing invitation to join a congregation of esteemed professors and scholars in Stirland, in the eastern frontier of our beloved empire. Our purpose is to investigate a series of perplexing anomalies that have been disturbing the region. Reports have been accumulating about strange occurrences, unexplained sightings, bizarre phenomena, and the local populace plagued by unsettling nightmares. The opportunity to investigate such anomalies was both a professional honour and a personal intrigue. Besides, it had been a bit more than a year since my dangerous trip to the north, in which I returned, thank Sigma, without serious repercussions. Or at least, so I think. <clears throat> anyway, I felt ready to take on this trip and help the other scholars in the ongoing investigations. With little hesitation, I set about preparing for the journey. My study, once a quiet refuge of books and specimens, quickly transformed into a bustling hub of activity as I gathered my equipment. Knowing the unpredictable nature of such expeditions, I packed some of my essentials, maps of the Empire, and particularly of Stirland and Sylvania, 
my trusty notebook filled with blank pages eagerly awaiting new discoveries for me to write. A compact medical kit, some provisions for sustenance, and, as a precaution, a few protective charms I had acquired over the years. Though ever a man of science, I've learned never to underestimate the folklore and superstitions within the lands of the Empire. Thus began my journey to Stirland, with the hope of shedding light on the mysteries that lie in wait. As I made my way on the carriage transporting me, my thoughts were a mix of scientific curiosity and cautious apprehension. You see, Stirland is a dangerously close realm to the haunted land of Sylvania, a place draped in shadows, both literal and metaphorical. Yet, I admit, this was exactly the kind of challenge that invigorated me, the pursuit of understanding in the face of the unknown. As I make my way into Stirland, let's quickly go over what we know about the province and why Sylvania, once a province of its own, eventually became a part of Stirland. Three rivers, Stir, Reich, and Ever, surround the lands of Stirland. Ancient ruins and graveyards that spread across empty fields remind Stirlanders that death is ever present. This grim world view of its people and the lack of power and wealth of the province has led to an unfavorable reputation amongst the rest of the citizens of the Empire. As a mainly closed-off society, Stirlanders have learned to be wary of the outsiders. While some folk may wander away, most of the citizens rather drink ale in a town tavern, listening to ominous stories. Being surrounded by mysterious and misty lands where the shadows of the unknown creatures shift, there is never shortage of such dark tales. But speaking with certainty, the attitude towards Stirland stemmed out of fear for another province, now long gone, Sylvania. Once the homeland of the terrifying von Karstein family that commanded the restless dead through dark magic had long been a source of fear. After the vengeful Manfred von Karstein was slain in the final vampire wars, Stirland claimed the grim lands of Sylvania, doubling its original borders. However, even as part of Stirland, the uncanny landscape and the eerie castles of Sylvania stayed seemingly desolate and empty. But not everything is as it seems. Upon reaching Stirland, the air was thick with a scent of unease. I arrived at the designated meeting place, a venerable hall known for hosting gatherings of scholarly import. Upon entering, I was greeted by the sight of my fellow academics, a diverse assembly of some of the Empire's finest minds. The room buzzed with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. Conversations were abounding with theories and speculations about the strange phenomena plaguing the region. I could hear snippets of dialogue about spectral sightings, references to ancient curses, and debates over the possible influence of dark magic. We gathered around a large oak table, its furnace littered with maps of Stirland and Sylvania, various documents and notes. The atmosphere was one of serious intent as each member of the impromptu council shared their preliminary findings and observations. Professor Erika von Jungfreud, a historian specializing in the Dark Ages of Sylvania, spoke first. She detailed the historical context of the region, referencing past incidents that bore a chilling resemblance to current events. Her accounts were followed by a meteorologist, who presented data on the recent peculiar weather patterns observed in the vicinity. As my turn came, I shared my perspective as a biologist and zoologist. I proposed the possibility of undiscovered flora or fauna 
influencing the local populace, perhaps emitting toxins or pheromones capable of inducing hallucinations or affecting mental states. However, I was careful to not dismiss the potential of supernatural elements, given the history and lore surrounding Sylvania. The most intriguing contribution came from a scholar of the arcane arts, who suggested that a confluence of dark magic might be at play, possibly disturbed or harnessed by an unknown entity. This theory seemed to resonate with many. As the meeting progressed, it became increasingly clear that this mystery would not yield to simple explanations. The first day concluded with a sense of unified purpose. We decided to investigate a bit more while we were in the area, to see what else we could find. Over the following days there, not much happened, but we managed to draw some conclusions. The locals had been cooperative, albeit hesitant. Their stories, while fragmented and laced with superstition, provided vital clues. The nightmares, they claimed, were not ordinary dreams, but vivid, terrifying experiences that left them waking in cold sweats, with a sense of impending doom. The local folk spoke in hushed tones about shadows moving in ways they shouldn't, and a chilling, unplaceable sense of dread that seemed to descend with the night. These accounts were not merely superstitious whispers. Even the most skeptical among us couldn't ignore the pattern of the incidents, all eerily pointing towards... Uh -huh, Sylvania. Our team comprised of experts in various fields, from folklore and paranormal studies to biology and meteorology, had been tasked to unravel this mystery. The main suspicion was that the source of these disturbances lied somewhere in the heart of Sylvania. Known for its dark history and connection to the tales of the undead, Sylvania is a land shrouded in myth and fear. Harkwell, the region of Sylvania, has long been associated with tales of the supernatural and the macabre. It is a place where the veil between the living and the dead is said to be perilously thin, a land marked by its past rulers. The vampire counts. These formidable undead rulers, with Vlad von Karstein as the most notorious among them, wielded dark powers and commanded legions of the undead, instilling both terror and a perverse form of order. Their reign, marked by battles, political machinations, and the blurring of the lines between life and death left an indelible legacy, shaping the landscape and the people of the region forever. The very forests of Sylvania seem to whisper of these bygone times. The trees, gnarled and ancient, stand as silent witnesses to the countless horrors and mysteries that have unfolded beneath their boughs. The land is dotted with ancient castles and mausoleums. Castle Drakenhof, for example, is perhaps the most infamous stronghold in Sylvania. It stands as a symbol of the power and terror of the vampire counts. It was the seat of Vlad von Karstein, the first and most formidable of these undead rulers. The castle itself is an imposing structure, its gothic spires and foreboding walls a stark reminder of the dark legacy it represents. The lore of Sylvania is rife with accounts of the undead, of spirits unable to find peace, and the dark rituals performed under the cover of night. Yet, there is more to Sylvania than its association with the undead. Contrary as to many might think, Sylvania is home to many people, and I mean, let me clarify, 
actual living people that actually might call this place their home. The land is home to our hardy and resilient folk, people who have adapted to life in this foreboding landscape. Their customs, folklore and ways of life are as much a part of Sylvania's identity as its more sinister legends. By the standards of the more sophisticated Empire residents, the largest towns in Sylvania are still regarded as rural backwaters. They are half-empty locations where people wear clothes that haven't been in style for more than 50 years. Few people can afford to live in these towns, and the majority are really overgrown villages situated on better land. As a result, only a small number of people live there. Sylvania is technologically below the rest of the Empire, and people there view gunpowder as a terrifying marvel. There is hardly any middle class, and the divide between the nobility and peasants is still insurmountable, even far worse than in the lands of Bretonia. Starvation is a regular worry due to the low agricultural production. Most people regard experiencing hunger as an inevitable aspect of existence. Turning to sweet pork, the Sylvanians' euphemism for human flesh, is considered distasteful but not evil. Such is life in those haunted lands, for the regular folk and the circumstances can call for desperate measures. Another curious point of note is that Sylvanians do not pay taxes in coin. The blood tax is the only tax paid by them. A tradition dating back generations. The amount of blood paid differs from place to place, depending on who controls the land. It is said that these taxes are paid by some majorly mysterious beings that govern their lives. Some of these creatures supposedly only tax the wealthier inhabitants, those who can afford at least two sets of clothing, and refuse to feast on the poorest of peasants, perhaps because they consider their blood of lesser quality. Despite their profound disdain for the appalling living conditions and the oppressive cruelty of their rulers, a handful of intrepid and fortunate Sylvanians have succeeded in escaping the grim confines of their homeland. They've journeyed westward, seeking asylum within the borders of Stirland, where they currently find themselves living as refugees. Given that Sylvania is in legal terms, a constituent part of Stirland, the regent's plight has not escaped the attention of Alberic Hopt Anderson, the incubant Lector Count of Stirland. He has shown a genuine concern for the welfare of the Sylvanian people. However, fully cognizant of the severe repercussions and the enormous costs that a direct military confrontation with the possible vampire counts would entail, he has deliberately refrained from deploying his forces into Sylvania to rescue those who remain under the yoke of vampiric tyranny. Yes, I said vampire counts, because although the most powerful of them have been killed, the possibility of more of them still existing within Sylvania has never truly been discarded, along with other mysterious and dangerous beings. In our investigation into the anomalies plaguing Sylvania, we encountered a testimony that would steer our research into a realm I had previously approached with skepticism. A local, pale and visibly shaken, came to us with a harrowing account. He spoke of encountering a spectral figure in the forests near his home, a ghostly entity that emitted a scream so piercing and laden with sorrow, it chilled the very marrow of his bones. It was just past dusk, and the woods were eerily quiet. The kind of silence that feels like a weight on your chest. I was making my way back home, 
when I saw her. A ghostly figure hovering just above the ground in the clearing. She was draped in tattered white, her face twisted in a sorrow so profound it felt like it could drown the world. And then she screamed. It wasn't just a sound, it was a physical force filled with such pain and rage. It froze me in my tracks. The trees themselves seemed to shudder. I've never heard anything like it. And I hope to never hear it again. It pierced right through me, leaving a coldness that still lingers. I ran as fast as I could, not daring to look back. But that scream, it haunts my dreams. Based on his description, and after much deliberation among the scholars, we concluded that what the peasant had encountered was a banshee. Banshees are ethereal beings, often associated with omens of death. These ghostly figures are draped in tattered remnants of what once might have been gowns, their faces locked in an eternal expression of anguish and despair. They are said to be the spirits of women who met untimely or violent ends, their souls unable to find peace, bound to the mortal realm by their tragedy. The most striking and terrifying aspect of a banshee is its scream. It is no mere cry, but a manifestation of their pain and rage, a sound so powerful it can physically harm, or in some tales, even kill those who hear it. The scream is said to be imbued with magic, resonating with the raw emotion that fuels it. Our team had to consider the possibility that these banshees, and perhaps other ghostly beings, were connected to the anomalies. The frequent nightmares reported by the locals, the sense of unease, the sightings of spectral figures, all these could be manifestations of the Banshee's influence. But why now? Banshees are not unknown in Sylvania, no. A land rife with tales of the undead and the supernatural. However, their increased activity and visibility suggested a change. A disturbance in the fabric of this haunted land. The possibility of Banshees in Sylvania naturally led us to consider the presence of other ethereal entities, notably the Cairn Wraiths. In the lore of our world, these are among the most feared spectral beings, often regarded as harbingers of doom and despair. Like the Banshees, Cairn Wraiths are tied to tales of death and the afterlife, but with a more malevolent bent. Cairn Wraiths are said to be the spirits of individuals who, in life, were consumed by greed and other corrupt desires. Upon death, their souls were denied rest, cursed to roam the mortal realm. They are often depicted as cloaked figures, their bodies ethereal and insubstantial, wielding scythes or other implements of death. These wraiths are bound to ancient burial sites or locations of significant slaughter and tragedy, drawing on the dark energies of these places. Their touch is as feared as the Banshee's scream, a chilling, life-draining force that can sap the vitality of the living. The mere sight of a Cairn Wraith is said to bring a sense of overwhelming dread, a forewarning of impending death. Unlike Banshees, whose anguish is palpable, Cairn Wraiths exude a cold, emotionless malevolence. The presence of Cairn Wraiths in Sylvania, if true, 
could signify a deeper disturbance in the spiritual fabric of the region. Such beings are not roused without cause. Their emergence might be linked to the same factors driving the Banshees to increased activity. In the course of our investigation, the subject of hex wraiths arose, a topic that commands both fascination and dread. Hex wraiths are spectral entities of a particularly malevolent kind. They are often regarded as omens of death and misfortune, far more aggressive and dangerous than their Banshee and Cairn wraith counterparts. Hex wraiths are depicted as ghostly riders, shrouded in ethereal flames that chill rather than burn. They ride upon spectral steeds, which carry them effortlessly across physical and ethereal planes. These wraiths are typically armed with long, cursed scythes that can cut through armor and soul alike. It is said that their very presence brings a suffocating aura of despair capable of overwhelming even the bravest of hearts. Legend has it that hex wraiths were once mortal riders, perhaps knights or soldiers, who were cursed and bound to an eternal existence of torment and rage. Now they roam the lands, particularly drawn to areas where death and sorrow are abundant. Their purpose is often linked to the seeking of vengeance or the fulfillment of some unresolved, tragic destiny. To understand the restless dead, one must understand the nature of magic. The winds of magic constantly emerge from the realm of chaos and blow out across the world. Magical energies permeate everything, Gusting down from the chaos wastes, most of the currents of magical energy separate into one of the eight colors of magic. Some, however, remain a roiling mass of pure dark magic that descends where it will. A peculiar quality of dark magic is that like attracts like. Once dark magic starts to build up in an area, more and more of it will be drawn to that same place. This forms a swirling vortex of evil that eventually coalesces into a solid form. Warpstone. It is dark magic that provides the power to animate the dead. Therefore, many of the areas where that fell force waxes strongest are also places that attract or spawn undead. Some philosophers observe that, since chaos feeds on strong emotions, places where great negative emotions such as fear, terror, hatred and horror have been felt also attract dark magic. They claim that battlefields, plague-stricken towns and houses where dark deeds of murder have been committed draw the forces of undeath to them. Alternatively, it could simply be a reflection of the fact that dreadful energies are often unleashed during battles, or that the mass graves and plague pits of diseased townships attract and provide cover for vampires, ghosts and other dark beings. Whatever the reason, there are particular areas in the old world and beyond that attract the undead, and the restless spirits or damned souls along with them. These areas include the desolation of Nagash, the imperial realm of Sylvania, and the cursed city of Musulon in Bretonia, the ghoul caves in the World's Edge Mountains, or the zombie-haunted swamps south of Skavenblight and Tilia, just to name a few. These areas, ill-famed as they may be, are far from being the only places where the undead are found. Any lonely tower with access to old burial grounds or crypts may be the haunt of a necromancer. Groups of restless ghosts, or worse still, one of the vampires that they usually serve. 
after extensive investigations and many a sleepless night spent poring over ancient texts and analysing collected evidence, our scholarly team has arrived at a sobering conclusion. The surge in spectral appearances and the unsettling occurrences in Sylvania are not mere coincidences, no, but the result of an intensifying concentration of dark magic somewhere in the region. The malignant forces seem to have disturbed the delicate balance between the realms of the living and the dead, unleashing a host of ghosts, including at least one mournful banshee and possibly some malevolent cairn wraiths. Recognising the gravity of the situation and the potential threat to the populace, we have collectively decided to call upon the services of a witch hunter. This decision was not made lightly. Witch hunters, with their unyielding resolve and expertise in combating the supernatural and heretical, are perhaps our best hope in confronting and quelling the source of these disturbances. The witch hunter we seek to engage will be tasked with a mission of great peril and importance. They will venture into the heart of Sylvania to investigate the epicenter of these ghostly apparitions. Their objective is not only to gather deeper insights onto the nature of this dark magic surge, but also to confront it, and if possible, Sigma willing, banish the Banshees. The appointed witch hunter will need to navigate not only the physical dangers of Sylvania, but also the complex web of magic and ancient curses that enshroud it. The risks are immense, and the path fraught with danger but the need for action is urgent. This journey has been one of both discovery and profound concern. As a man of science, I am accustomed to seeking answers, but I have learned that some truths are shrouded in shadows, forever elusive and often perilous. The situation in Sylvania is a stark reminder of the delicate balance between the known and the unknown the living and the dead, and the fine line that separates scholarly pursuit from the dangers of the arcane. Ah, I can only hope that their efforts will bring some measure of peace to the troubled lands of Sylvania. As for us, the scholars and academics, our work continues to study, to learn, and to endeavour to understand the mysteries that lie at the fringes of our knowledge. As the chapter of our investigation in Sylvania comes to a close, with the witch hunter embarking on their daunting task, I find myself preparing for the next leg of my journey. My scholarly pursuit now takes me to Ostermark, a region known for its own unique history and mystery within the vast lands of the Empire. Ostermark, with its rolling plains and significant landmarks, promises a new realm of discovery. This province had its capital destroyed many years ago when the twin-tailed comet destroyed the now-cursed city of Mordheim. That and many other things will be discussed during our journey there is so much more adventure and knowledge that awaits us. Thus, with my journals, instruments and an ever-growing curiosity, I set out towards Ostermark. My journey as a scholar is far from over. In fact, I have a feeling that a new chapter has only just begun. Again, thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to play it for free on PC, PlayStation and Xbox today by using the link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will receive a massive bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. This bonus pack is available for a limited time, so make sure to grab it today.
On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.